the CT scanner uh, has become a really important tool in paleontology uh, because it allows scientists to look at the insides of fossils that otherwise wouldn't be possible. My name is Jack Tseng. I'm a postdoctoral researcher here at the American Museum of Natural History in the Division of Paleontology, and my research focuses on feeding specializations in carnivorous mammals. CT scanning is very critical for my research because in order to bring some of these extinct animals back to life and look at how they fed, we really need to have a good sense of the anatomy, the anatomical features both inside and on the surface of the skulls. And then we can use that virtual information to build models in a computer, which we then use to conduct feeding simulations for both living and extinct species. We recently finished a, a pilot study on a small sample of living species to try to come up with a method to reconstruct the feeding styles of extinct animals. We used uh, meat specializing modern species uh, like the leopard and the gray wolf and, and also very generalist feeding species like the raccoon and the skunk. We looked at how the skull responds to muscle forces and to biting forces uh, at different tooth positions throughout the jaw. The meat specialists tend to have one point uh, in the entire uh, tooth roll that is very strong. For example, leopards hunt with their front teeth, so they have a very strong biting point at the front, as opposed to the gray wolf using a lot of crushing, so they have a very strong biting point in the back. And compare that to modern generalists, which do not have a specialized biting point, and instead they just have a gradually stronger skull as you move backward into the back of the tooth row. And applying that knowledge to the fossil record, we can see that some early carnivore species to be you know, very generalist with that same kind of you know, progression of uh, skull strength throughout the tooth row, whereas others with a very specific biting points are meat specializing. And with this simulation method, you can really compare how diet and engineering of the skull are related. In another study, we took the method one step further and started looking at the ancestors of the living and extinct uh, carnivore species, creating hypothetical models of their skulls and tried to look at uh, the direction of evolution of feeding specialization in the overall carnivorous lineage. Before CT scanning became very widespread, um, this type of analysis looking at the potential feeding adaptation of extinct animals mostly relied on mathematical equations and measurements on the skull instead of actually modeling you know, the entire skull as a single structure. But once CT scanning became uh, widespread enough and cheap enough to use, the technology really drove some of these newer analyses that are enabling us to look at extinct animals and try to reconstruct their lifestyles in ways that were not possible before.